Today on Straight Talk Africa, political satire from the diaspora, poking fun at political and religious figures and symbols can make you laugh, but can also stir up a great deal of controversy. That's coming up next right here on Straight Talk Africa. Hello, welcome Straight Talk Africa, live from the Voice of America studios here in Washington. It's Wednesday, May 13th. I am Shaka Sali. Well, hello Shaka and hello to all our viewers and listeners on the continent and elsewhere. I'm Mariam Adialo, your social media reporter. Today, we'll discuss African comedy and the political satire in the diaspora. Well, lots of laughs, but a serious discussion as well. Coming up later in our SDA inbox, we'll share some thoughts on our topic through your emails, tweets, and Facebook comments. Hope you'll stay with us. But first, comedians are all over the entertainment circuit, trying to make us laugh with their political satire. From the likes of Herbert Seguja, also known as Mendo Museveni, to Adiola Fayem, presenter of Keeping It Real on Sahara Television, to Kenya and South African political satire puppet shows. We have more from my colleague, Paul Diho. They seem to be omnipresent in our lives, to the extent that not only are they on the local African television, but they have gone global via the internet, especially on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Habata Seguja, alias Mendo Museveni, a secondary school teacher and mimic-in-chief, is one of Uganda's top comedians. He has built his career impersonating celebrities and politicians, especially Ugandan President Yoi Museveni. Seguja imitates some Museveni to near perfection, from the expressions and voice to the stance and clothing. Seguja became well versed in all things Museveni. But Seguja calls it frankly, not mockery, especially since she's an avid Museveni supporter. The president was so amused that, that he had to wipe away tears from laughing so hard. <laughs> New York-based Nigerian-born Adeola Fayen, a producer and presenter of Keeping It Real on Sahara TV, is also making her mark on the international stage. She now largely aims at that talent at the political elite, especially Nigerian politicians. It's a passion Fayen hopes to take far while finding her own success. Observers say Fahen's online TV show Keeping It Real is causing some concern among some Nigerian politicians. In Kenya, a local TV show featuring life-size puppets in the likeliness of various top newsmakers called XYZ premiered on Kenyan television more than five years ago. The show centers on current affairs and is heavily satirical. Its producers say it is a unique and quirky way to discuss Kenyan and international political and social issues. XYZ creator and producer Gado. We thought we could have um, uh, 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 an interesting um, show um, using uh, puppets. We can. Um, satirize um, politicians and lampoon them but uh, at the same time you know uh, interrogate uh, them and uh, Kenyans as a society. Satirical shows are like uh, Keeping It Real, XYZ and the South African Best African Puppet Show created by controversial South African cartoonist Jonathan Shapiro have millions of viewers are tuning in to watch on television and many more watch online. Analysts say political satirists are pushing the boundaries of free speech in some countries more than others, and our comedians across Africa are now beginning to cash in, and the sky is the limit. Paul Nihau, VOA News. 
Thanks, Paul, for that interesting report. Uh, now, joining us here in our Washington studios is our distinguished guest, Ugandan comedian artist Herbert Seguja Mendo, who is currently on an American comedy tour. He is best known for his parody of Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni, as well as U.S. President Barack Obama and Zimbabwean President Robert Gabriel Mugabe. I have to say, frankly, Herbert, that I'm profoundly honored and exceedingly humbled yes. to have the opportunity to host you on Straight Talk Africa for the first time. Thank you. You're most welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm so honored to be here too. Thank you very much. It's a great opportunity to the comedy fraternity in Uganda and Africa at large. We look forward, of course, to your entertainment. <laughs> and joining us from VOA's in New York studios is Adiola Fayehun, host of Sahara TV's Keeping It Real with Adiola, a weekly satire show that focuses on African politics, especially the recent historic Nigerian elections. Well, Adiola, what I can I say, you're most welcome back to Straight Talk Africa. Thank you very much, Shaka. It's great to be back. And thank you very much uh, for your coverage of the recent historic elections in Nigeria. Thank you very much. And last but not least, Karid Arubai, a Sudanese political cartoonist, illustrator, designer, and writer based in Doha, Qatar. He is stuck politically charged images rose to prominence during the early stages of the Arab Spring protests. He also joins us on the phone from New York, the Big Apple. Thank you so much uh, for joining us for the first time, Karid. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm really sorry that uh, you couldn't make it to our studios. Uh, me too, me too. Uh, what an unfortunate event, but uh, at least I'm here, and thank you very much for having me. I'm very honored to be on the show. Well, there is always, of course, uh, another time. Uh, later in the program, we'll give you, the audience, a chance to call and talk with our guests. The number to call is 202-619-3111. The U.S. country code is 1. Let me come to you uh, immediately. Uh, Herbert, I have to say frankly that uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's like a dream come true. <laughs> so, um, I'm so honored to meet you. To, uh, I don't know whether uh, you're my number, uh, 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 number one fan, but of course number one was, uh, uh, was taken. Uh -huh. Who is, that? Who is your, your number one fan? <laughs> <laughs> my number one fan is His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. Really? You know, it's incredible that uh, you can actually succeed mm. at, uh, frankly, um, imitating the President of Uganda because uh, the last time I checked, uh, mm. he's not as... Uh, small, uh, you know, it, it doesn't look like you. Yeah, maybe because um, <clears throat> I move with, uh, uh, I move with uh, 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 the norms and uh, I, I can call them traditions of theater, mm -hmm. where you, uh, it includes uh, costuming, mm -hmm. makeup, mm -hmm. plus other things, lighting and others. But when it comes to costuming and makeup, uh, uh, they make, no. they make the, me they make the image of the president. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, because comedy is about expectation and mm -hmm. surprise, mm -hmm. I don't need to put on the costumes of the president. I, I just want to surprise people. So I end up going back to my original character. Then when it comes to stage, vegetable. I put on as the president. So it gives you the freedom of expression, yes, really. You can exaggerate. Exactly. You can sensationalize. Yes, Wait. yes. Wait. Where do you draw the line Wait. sometimes? Uh, because Wait. there are times when you say Wait. things that um, uh -huh. sometimes Some someone, Some frankly, right. Some right. in their position, Some may not want uh, <laughs> to listen to. Well, um, uh, at times I find that challenge, actually. Well, well, you know, I write my script. Mm -hmm. I write my speech. But... Uh, of course, I'll go back to theater. Let me call it a script. President calls it a speech. So my speech, I think about many things. But then uh, the challenge I have, I have to look at comedy versus the image of the president. Mm. And uh, I realize that uh, as you look at the image of the president, you have to present it on stage. So there are some things you can't hide away. Okay. For example, if you are talking about the economy, you are not going, you are not going to be a, a, a comedian just. There are some things you have to, the facts. So those facts, at times they hurt, yeah. they hurt people. Mm -hmm. But at the end, you have to make it comical because at the end of it all, I'm entertaining. I'm not uh, presenting a, 
<laughs> state of the nation address. So mm. what you do is not necessarily a reflection of the reality of the situation, really? Um, I would say 50%. You know, drama is uh, a mirror of the society. Mm -hmm. uh, what I do on stage is a reflection of what happens in the society. But uh, basing on the political system in Africa, there are some things you have to give up and concentrate on the comical part of it. Because, you know, it's, uh, 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 politics is, is just a... Uh, politics is such a hard game that once you involve yourself in such a... Uh, in too much political part of it, then you can end up losing your audience. So you tend to either forget that and then concentrate on the comical part only. What inspired you to get into uh, comedy, really? Well, uh, my inspiration uh, uh, for the president, uh, my inspiration came in 2002. Uh, I remember it was a swearing-in ceremony for the president mm. of Uganda, who is still the president of Uganda, Yuri Museveni, <laughs> in 2001-2002. He invited a comedian from Zim Zambia. Mm -hmm. uh, he's called uh, Ben Philly. Uh, ben Philly came to Uganda. He was given five minutes to perform before the president at Kololo Airstrip. Mm. Ben Philly imitated the Ugandan president. He went to uh, the, president, uh, the former president, the late Nelson Mandela, and then another, another uh, 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 BBC correspondent. I was so much inspired. I felt like I, I asked myself questions like, mm. how can someone out of Uganda do the impressions of <laughs> President Museveni. But by that time, I was very, very small. Which, but I said, let me try my best. Which you do, of course, uh, mm. and very effectively. Mm. Um, Adiora, how are you today? I'm doing really well. Thank you. And you? Uh, I'm doing terrific. Uh, now, tell me about uh, your coverage of the recent historic elections in Nigeria. In fact, uh, someone was saying that uh, since October the 1st, 1960, Nigeria, in fact, had never had a real election, except the one that was aborted uh, July, uh, Ju Ju July uh, 12, 1993. Do you agree with that? I was going to say except the one of 1993, which, of course, um, you know what happened with that. But I feel like this year, Nigerians, we finally, we can say that our voices were heard. People mm -hmm. were able to go out there and make their own decision. And I think that the social media played a huge role as well as online media uh, and shows like myself. In terms of educating people, you know about the, the two major contestants. Uh, my show, for example, I was able to talk about so many of the controversial issues that people were talking about regarding the two candidates. And that helped a lot of people to realize that this decision shouldn't be based on religion and ethnicity. I feel like religion and ethnicity plays a huge role when it comes to Nigerians making their decision. But this year, uh, through the social media, there was a, a major campaign on social media. People voicing their opinion about the fact that they are tired of this present administration and corruption especially. I feel like people were able to use the social media, Twitter, Facebook, and of course uh, shows like Dr. Damages on Sahara TV with Rudolf Okonko, as well as my show. Uh, I feel like they really helped. Uh, I know that we got a lot of views during the election. I was really, really surprised. But people were hungry. People were looking for information. People had questions about all the candidates, and they wanted answers. And I feel like that's one of the things that my show, for example, was able to provide. What about reports, uh, Adiola, that uh, you actually uh, like and support uh, uh, incumbent president, uh, 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 good luck, uh, Jonathan Eberi, but in fact, when one <laughs> looks very, very closely at your work, you don't seem to have given me a break. Well, I guess that's because I use sarcasm a lot on my show. I, I guess I'm the only one that would declare my own dying love for Mr. President and then talk about how corrupt he is in the same sentence and why he needs to step down. So it's like I would sort of psych you up before I talk about the 10 things that are wrong with you. So hopefully at least you would listen. So I feel like not coming off directly as, hey, you, you, you've been there and we're not really seeing the results. But coming off as, first of all, know that I'm your best fan, I'm your biggest fan, 
Uh, I feel like even if Mr. President is watching, hopefully he would laugh at that moment and then maybe be more receptive to whatever I have to say. So uh, I, I'm the one that would say it on the show that um, Mr. President is my president and I'm his biggest fan. But then when you listen closely, I'm trying to say the truth. Now, it has nothing to do with uh, Mr. Goodluck Jonathan. I, I met him before. He's a gentleman, I would say. But it has to do with his leading... Uh, ability, his, his quality as a leader and what Nigerians want at this time. Uh, Nigerians, we were so ready for a change and when the election was over, majority of the people were celebrating actually. So how was, for example, um, your uh, you know, approach to the coverage received on the ground, uh, especially supporters of President Goodluck Jonathan Ebere? Um, can you repeat that? I, I find it hard to hear. Basically, what I was asking from you is the reaction from the ground, especially from the people who supported President Goodluck Jonathan Ebede. I see what I've been hearing on ground. Well, from the onset of my, my show, it has always been mixed uh, reviews. Of course, I would hear from supporters of Mr. President uh, and also from people who think that he's been there for too long and we're not really seeing any result. So I hear from both sides, but I have to make sure that I'm delivering the news no matter what happens. Uh, I cannot please everybody. Uh, I just my, I feel like my job is to make sure that I put out the fact out there and then people can do whatever they want to do with the fact. And I'm so happy that Nigerians, we didn't really stop on President Goodluck Jonathan even now that President uh, Mohamed Buhari has been elected, he's not in power yet, but people are already passing across the message that we're watching you. You know, even before he became president, there's this hashtag that Baba, when you get there, this is what we expect of you. Nigerians are expressing their expectations and mm -hmm. people are saying, if you don't do well, just like we kicked out Jonathan after the first time, we may kick you out. Now, I, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, but I feel like Nigerians are more vocal now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now we'll pause for a short break and would like to remind you that Straight Talk Africa is now on the social networking website Twitter. And we are tweeting live. Follow us at VOA Shaka. That's VOA Shaka. And join in on today's discussion with your questions and comments. Don't forget to use the hashtag VOA Political Satire. And we are still on Facebook. Just enter the keyword Straight Talk Africa. Become a fan and connect with other friends of the Voice of America. We'll be right back with you, so please, don't go away. Jonathan Shapiro was born in Cape Town, South Africa, and is known for hard-hitting cartoons about President Jacob Zuma. He has twice been sued by President Zuma for defamation, and both cases were dropped. He's widely considered to be South Africa's most popular and leading cartoonist. Tayo Fatunla in Nigeria is an award-winning cartoonist whose work has been exhibited worldwide. He's also the creator of the educational cartoon strip Future on Black History, Our Roots. Doa El Adol is considered by many to be Egypt's most famous female cartoonist. She's also a risk taker. In Egypt, a cartoonist may legally be charged of insulting the president or blasphemy. She was once charged when she drew a caricature that criticized politicians taking advantage of religion. She currently works at the prominent Al Masri Al Yum newspaper. <laughs> I wanted to present music and a side of American culture that is most important to me, that is a part of who I am. They're going to get some incredible performances. That's one of the things I love, bringing these artists in so you can get to see them do what they do. It's soul music, and that's what music is. It's that which comes from the soul. This is Straight Talk Africa on The Voice of America. What is your opinion about today's topic? Call us at 202-619-3111, U.S. country code 1. When you call, remember the following. Ask only one question, keep your comment brief, and turn down the volume on your radio or television. Now let's return to Straight Talk Africa. Oh, 
Peter. Hey, how are you, my photographer? You are very good. How is life? Yeah. Eh. You, you, you brought up, you brought them back. Yes. Eh. How are they? Hope they are looking nice. Um, they are good. Eh? Yes. Let me see. Oh, 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 this is very good. Eh? Memories, memories. Eh, this one is very good. I, 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 I will frame it and I put it in my house. Eh? Oh, this is for Uhuru. Uhuru, I remember this is the swearing in. The swearing in ceremony. Eh? That one is very good. Oh, now this one we are launching the East African Federation. You see? Eh, this is very good, very good. Eh. Good. Eh? Now this is where you went wrong because you see you overpixeled it. Eh? You see yeah. And then uh, I think you didn't crop very well because you you, you now know these things of, of, of photography. That's our Washington studio guest, comedian Herbert Seguja Mendo, performing his comedy act. Mendo Museveni, satellizing the Ugandan president, Yoweri Museveni. Welcome back. Uh, we go to uh, um, Khalid. Uh, Khalid, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. How are you? I'm great, I'm great. How are you? I am terrific. Uh, what inspired you to become a cartoonist uh, or an artist for that matter, Khalid? Um, well, I come from a very political family in Sudan. One of my uncles used to be uh, a president. The other one... Uh, you know, he, he basically had a failed coup and was executed for it. One of, one of them was an Islamist, the other one was a communist. Mm -hmm. uh, my father's a diplomat. So uh, politics was basically the reason why I left Sudan and uh, we went to stay in Doha. So uh, for me, you know, cartoons were the perfect form of, 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 of art to explain how I feel and to basically just uh, talk about how the situation is because... Uh, it's not. It's not directed to to uh, a certain audience. It's directed to everybody, from you know, sophisticated museum goers to people, everyday people who just read the newspaper. And the other thing is, is that in the newspapers in the Middle East have become um, a lie, basically, it's a joke, right? So the first the, the first page where it's supposed to be the important news, nobody reads that anymore because it's always it's always lies, right? Like this, you know, the the headline is always something like you know. Our great leader has achieved something amazing, and oh, everybody's okay, and we're all going to live happily ever after, and which everybody knows it's a lie. Uh, so everybody just immediately turns into the last page and, 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 and looks at the cartoon, because even though it's, uh, 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 you know, it, it, it kind of plays along the same line as well of everything is okay or talks about a certain issue but doesn't hit the hard line, because, of course, you know, in the Middle East it could be a problem if you ever tell the truth as a journalist. So, uh, but people believe that because it, it's 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 uh, um, it's the it's the funny part of of, of telling the truth. So, uh, I always felt connected to that, and I always wanted to do more of it. So, um, you know, I, I I started drawing cartoons and I started applying to uh, newspapers all around the Arab world, and but it, it really it really it, it could, I couldn't get through to anybody. And, and I think mostly because of the generation gap between the people who are managing these institutions and the people and the young people who are trying to uh, enter these institutions, because there's a huge um, genera generation gap uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the Middle East. So this is this is this is what happened. And I so I, I, I got kicked out of an editor's office once, and I was very upset. So at, at like many people. Uh, around around the uh, around uh, North Africa at that time, I started a Facebook page, and I started posting my cartoons. And um, during the Arab Spring, it went from having 20 people who were my friends who were encouraging me to having 2,000 people, 3,000 people, now to having nearly 60,000 people from all across the globe. So, um, you know, it, it, it basically the whole thing is a coincidence. Uh, it just it all happened really fast. And I started working with a lot of activists uh, from around uh, uh, the Arab, the Arab Spring nations. I started working with a lot of artists, and um, and then I got published. <laughs> now, to, to what extent, uh, Khalid, uh, does your work, does your art uh, reflect uh, 
the reality of the situation? Um, I, I hope I reflect the reality of the situation. I really don't know to what extent, but I, I hope I do. And at the end, I try to ask questions. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that this is my point of view and it's, it's absolutely right and everybody's wrong, because then I'll be just like the government. But what I'm trying to say is that this is my point of view. I open a discussion, which is, which is, and 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 talk very transparently about issues that a lot of governments in North Africa don't don't talk about, uh, and situations that people don't talk about. So in my Facebook page, and this is a good thing about social media, is that people talk to each other. Yeah. So I post a cartoon. People object to it. People like it. Uh, people discuss the situation. Uh, everybody swears at me at some point. And then, you know, it, it, and, and then these people actually become friends, right? Yes. So you can, you, can, you can go down at the page, scroll down, and then you can find these people who are actually uh, uh, talking or, or, or discussing, and then uh, violently, uh, sort of, and then, and then at the end you'll see them that they're actually becoming friends and understanding each other. And this, is, and this is kind of the message that I'm trying to push out, that, you know, we need dialogue, we need transparency in the situation to understand what's going on and to help move forward, rather than just lie and say everything that okay when everybody knows it's not okay what about the most recent um, election in uh, sudan of course won by field marshal uh or you know uh Omar Omar bashir, -Bashir. Yeah. Um, of course some people will tell you that in fact it was a contest uh, uh omar al bashir against omar al bashir because most of the uh, uh, political parties uh, decided not to participate uh, how were you able to portray that type of election um, well, you know, it's it's a joke. The whole the whole election is a joke. Everybody knows that he was going to win. Either the the other po the other politicians got involved or not. He was he was always going to win, and it's always going to be 95 or 99 percent for Ahmed Abdeshir because this is how it is. This is this is how he's been winning elections for 25 years, right? Yes. So uh, you know you don't you don't really need a cartoon to tell people that. But it's it's it's. Um, it's good to, to, to say it. And the good thing about social media, again, is that I got to say it. A lot of people that were on the ground in Sudan uh, uh, that worked for publications couldn't say this kind of thing. So uh, for a lot of them, my Sudanese viewers, was, that, was, that, that was, was the reason that they followed me is because I talk about these issues. I do talk about that Omar of this year, uh, you know, being, being a total fraud, the, 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 the elections being a total fraud. So the, the corruption that's happening... So, you know, it, everybody knew that it's, it's uh, it, that is in itself, the word election in Sudan is a cartoon. You know, like I don't even need to have a punchline. I, I see. Very briefly, what about uh, the portrayal of Sadiq Arimai Deman, of course, uh, who has been Sudanese prime minister twice and, of course, twice being overthrown by the military, and his brother-in-law, Dr. Hassan al turabi Do they still have a future in Sudanese politics, by the way? Yes. Uh, See, the thing is that we are the, the, the people who are in power in Sudan been in power in Sudan since the independence from the British. And again, that comes back to the big gap that we have between young people who are trying to be empowered and, 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 and the older generation who does not want to let go. Yeah. Right? So people don't really care about them anymore. People don't really care about who runs anymore. People who don't really care about who objects to uh, President Bashir anymore. Because it, this is, the situation is basically the same people for the last 60 years, <laughs> you know? There's, there's nothing has changed at all. Like the same cartoon that I've done four years ago or five years ago at the last election, I reposted again at this election because it's the same situation. It's a joke. Very you interesting. Know? And these, yes, and these people have been in power for 60 years. Sadiq al-Mahdi is 79 years old, or, uh, I, I think, you know? And Al-Turabi is the same thing, and he's his brother-in-law. So we're basically ruled by families and by by people who have been there for decades unfortunately and who, and who not want to give up unfortunately Khalid time happens not to be our best ally will come back to you later you're tuned into straight talk Africa and we'll have more of a discussion in a moment but first here is Maria Majero take it away Maria well, thanks, Shaka. Still to come will reveal some of the fantastic feedback we've received from our audience viewers and listeners through social media but now, here is our letter of the week from a Facebook fan from the Nigerian capital, Abuja, who responded to our question of the week. Omunua Okugbo Igodalo in Abuja, Nigeria, writes, 
I strongly believe that placing satirical limits on freedom of expression as it relates to religion and politics is a step in the right direction. I also believe that freedom is often abused, leading to bitterness, distrust, disunity, and violent clashes in society. Like Voice of America on Facebook. Follow VOA on Twitter. Join VOA on our YouTube channel. Like, follow, join VOA. This is Straight Talk Africa on The Voice of America. Call us now with your questions and comments. The number 202-619-3111. And the U.S. country code is 1. Call direct and we'll call you right back. Remember to keep your questions brief. Now back to Straight Talk Africa. Ogadjo now must cough out this money. He must cough out. Do you know what Nigeria could have been like today with $20 trillion? Like, I can't even process it in my mind. We're supposed to not only be leading Africa, we should be one of the most advanced countries in the world. This new administration has a lot to do in retrieving back the stolen money. Don't forget Abacha's money that the U.S. is trying to return as well. Please, for the sake of the lives of millions of Nigerians that have been altered by these thieves, yes, bring back our stolen wealth. Bring back the glory of Nigeria. And speaking of bringing back stolen items, I am so happy for the woman in Surulere, Lagos, Mrs. Orekoya whose three boys were kidnapped and taken ransom for 13 million naira. I'm so happy that the boys were found. Imagine the youngest is only 11 months and three of them were kidnapped by their nanny in conjunction with kidnappers for days. Now this is just to tell all the parents out there, please be careful who you leave your children with and who you let into the lives of your kids. Don't ever trust someone that you don't know. Uh, just be careful. Just be careful. That's all I would say. But while I'm very happy that this woman is rejoicing and reunited with her children I can't help but think about the parents of the Chibo girls I honestly cannot believe that a year after the kidnapping these girls will still be missing so I understand that our leaders in Nigeria don't care about the common people that was our New York studio guest <laughs> Adiora Fayehun host of Sahara TV is keeping it real with Adiora Welcome back to Straight Talk Africa, live from Washington. Thank you. Now, once again, it's time Thank to you. bring in my colleague and social media reporter, Mariama. Take it away again, Mariama. Well, thanks, Shaka. Last January's deadly attack of cartoonist and journalist at the French satirical magazine, Charlie Hebdo, reignited the debate about freedom of expression and satire, and whether some cartoons can sometimes go too far and can be considered as hate speech. Well, this leads us to our question of the week asking, how do you feel about placing satirical limits on freedom of expression as it relates to politics and, religi and religion? Well, thanks everybody for using all our social media platform to communicate to us. Let's begin with a comment from Mulane Dixon uh, from Kampala in Uganda who writes, Placing satirical limits on freedom of expression is dictatorial governance. Constitutionally, people are legally allowed to have their own, their own uh, expression, be it toward religion, politics, or poor leadership. Why then deny them their rights? African leaders should learn from their mistakes and learn the, to respect the Constitution. Another reminder that we are tweeting live today. Use the hashtag VOA Political Satire. And if you haven't yet, please follow us on Twitter at VOA Shaka. Speaking of, uh, of it, uh, it seems like that yesterday's live Twitter chat with uh, Shaka about freedom of expression and freedom of speech has garnished more discussion on our Twitter page. And thanks to everybody who was able to join the conversation. Now let's go to tweet, two tweets. First, we have uh, one from uh, Ebenezer Emmanuel who tweets that it's one among the stumbling blocks for progress. It has to frankly and seriously come to an end 
if we are to move on. Well, let's uh, look at another tweet. Uh, this time it's uh, from uh, Lawrence uh, Swider, who sends this. I believe in the marketplace of ideas, the best way to address an ugly idea is to shine a light on it. Well, lots of uh, great points here, Shaka and Gess. Uh, your take on these ones. Interesting, uh, Hubbard, uh, your reaction to that? Uh... Well, uh, I, support, uh, I support my friend on Facebook uh, who said that uh, uh, there, is, there is need for freedom. We, uh, we need to be free in expressing our ideas. However, um, uh, maybe what I can advise is that uh, let's not just be let's not just go too far with it you know mm. uh it ceases to be a satire but uh let's do it within our limits so you exercise a sort of self-censorship yes yes i believe so so in, in case if we're doing it uh, uh let, let, let me first go back to the, the freedom uh, uh i think le, uh, we, we just need to be free with what we uh, what we are doing we should not have limits for example uh, my first time to perform as the president, I had that passion. I had a feeling like, let me do this my first time. It was my first time. I had a plan. We, uh, they had to take me to the first level. I rehearsed before the, the first organizing committee, the second organizing committee, the third organizing committee. Then they pushed me to the fourth organizing committee. You are doing that in a collaboration with the president's people? Uh, not the president's people, but uh, mm. uh, okay, uh, uh, at the law, uh, at the grassroots, including the LOC chairman, uh, LOC one, LOC, then RDC. But when uh, it came to the LOC five, uh, five minutes to the performance, mm. he came to me and said, "You man, you want to post to put us in problems." <laughs> How can you ridicule the president? How can you, uh, you want us to be fired? I felt like I would present my script to him, but he couldn't allow. So I ended up canceling my performance. So that's where we, uh, 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 we need to be given freedom so that we express what we want. And because uh, as long as uh, I'm trying to bring out a certain idea in a comical way. Mm -hmm. I think that's fine, and we deserve that freedom. I see. Mm. Well, Mariama, please share some more of our audience feedback, reaction. Well, indeed, Shaka, we can move on to a posting uh, from Mohamed Ahmed Mansour uh, from Monrovia in Liberia, who writes, I think placing satirical limits on freedom of expression as it relates to politics and religion will ease tensions between political and religious leaders. Religious leaders should learn to accept criticism and political leaders should listen to each other's demands as a sign of democracy. Well, let's look at another comment. This time, again, from our Facebook page, it comes from Mandela Bruce of Bushenyi in Uganda, who says, really, I don't understand why people are fighting day and night for fulfillment of self-based interests other than what Allah, God, and Yahweh calls for. Just one love for humankind. Very interesting opinions. Shaq and Guess, again, your thoughts on these ones. Very interesting indeed, uh, Mariama. What about you, um, Adiora? Is it equally interesting to you? Um, to be honest, I, I like like the two comments that Miriam read just now. I don't think that any limit should be placed on people that are uh, making fun of politicians, especially. Now, religion, one has to be careful because it, it has led to a lot of unnecessary uh, killings. But political officials were elected and they should be accountable to the people that elected them. If you can make fun of your officials, they become like dictators if people cannot see anything. A show like mine, for example, was birthed out of necessity because it looks like the traditional media is not really saying anything that would get the attention of our officials. It's like they keep talking about the good things that they are doing when it's so clear that this person is not doing well. People are dying. Uh, kids are being kidnapped. Boko Haram is killing people, and and the traditional media keeps talking about how they they, they commission a new building and and this. So a show like mine was brought out of necessity because this is what people are saying at home. They may not necessarily go on the traditional media to talk about it, but 
someone has to talk about it. So that's how a show like mine was birthed. Now, it makes people laugh, but at the same time, it's talking about what's, what's really going on. And the moment you start placing a limit or you start trying to censor people that are, you know, into, into uh, people that are into what I'm into, like satirical shows like mine, then uh, the person is becoming an uh, authoritarian, so to say. So I, I would not, uh, I would not lobby for for them to censor any any uh, satirical show or I mean shows like X Y Z. It's doing great, and we are learning. Other people are learning about what's happening in those countries. People are learning about what's happening in Nigeria because of my show. And I don't focus on Nigeria alone. I focus on other countries as well. But Adiora, how about some who will say, how do you sincerely decide? as whether or not you are, clo you are crossing a line. And I'm talking about especially when you are making commentaries about uh, religious uh, issues and what have you. Uh, don't you sincerely and seriously consider things to do with uh, making sure that you are not socially, culturally, and sometimes perhaps even politically insensitive? Um, talking about religion, for me personally as a Christian, it's easier for me to make fun of Christian officials or, or religious people that are Christians but they are really religious but they are not doing the right thing. It's easier for me because I'm a Christian. It's harder for me to talk about Muslims. Uh, for example, the president of Burundi who was overthrown today in a coup. Are you very sure? Several times about the fact are you that, very sure about well, those facts? He, <laughs> well, he's denying it. Uh, he flew into his country and the, the army general did not allow him to land. Right now I heard that he's on his way to Uganda because he couldn't land in his country. So they're not letting him back. So, okay, even if he wasn't overthrown, at least there was an attempted coup today uh, in, um, in Burundi. I've made fun of the fact that he claims to be a born-again Christian and he's married to a pastor. And yet, he's been insensitive to the plight of his own people. Why would he want to run for third term when the Constitution only allows two terms? Now, he's saying that he was anointed by God. And my stand as a Christian is that God can anoint somebody else as well. There's no, no reason why he should be the only one anointed. He's been he served for more than 10 years. I mean, for 10 years already. Why, why do you think God cannot anoint somebody else to, to, you know, to carry on from here? So I think it's easier for me to make fun of... Um, so-called Christian officials that are not doing the right thing because I'm a Christian, but religion can, religion can be very, very, a very sensitive topic. But for politicians, I don't think there should be a limit if they're not doing the right thing. I mean, here in the U.S., they make fun of Obama like more than anybody, more than any other president, and you know he keeps doing what he's doing. So I don't think there should be a limit when it comes to politicians, especially African politicians. They're not accountable to anyone. You have to be careful about uh, Burundian President uh, Pierre Nkurunziza because his name actually means good news. And uh, you should also be reminded, by the way, Adiora, that uh, several years ago, a man called Hugo Chavez in Venezuela, Venezuela was overthrown for two days and came back until, of course, he died in office. And I remember in the 80s, a one General Jafar Numeri of Sudan was overthrown for three days, and he came back to state house. So you have to be careful. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens, but at least people made a statement today uh, letting him know how much they don't want him to run for third time. So maybe he will come back, I don't know. Thank but you. at least the fact that there was an attempted coup today was, you know, a message. Thank you very much. Uh, Karidi, what about you? Uh, when do you really sincerely feel that you're crossing the line? Karid, are you there? Well, thanks, Mariama, for bringing us this week's audience reaction. But maybe we'll get a chance to hear Khalid's uh, take. Uh, but for now, this will do it. Uh, for today's uh, social media segment, just a reminder that we appreciate all the feedback, whether it's in social media form or using other means to communicate to us. Please, please keep them coming. And if you are a new fan, just drop us a line at africatv at voanews.com. Once again, our email address is africatv at voanews.com. Or post your comment on our Facebook page. Just enter the keywords, Straight Talk Africa. Be sure to visit us online at, at voaafrica.com. Or you can join our YouTube channel. Just sign up to VOA TV to Africa. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at VOA Shaka. 
Now let's take a look at what's on tap for next week's program. Next week on Straight Talk Africa, for over 50 years, the Voice of America has been broadcasting to Africa in English and shortly thereafter, French, Swahili, Hausa and other languages. Today, VOA is a dynamic international multimedia broadcaster serving an estimated weekly global audience of 171 million people, with Africa as its largest audience. So join us next week as we look ahead at VOA's plans for the future. A reminder that you are tuned in to Straight Talk Africa. To participate in our discussion, please call us at 202-619-3111. U.S. country code is 1. We'll continue our discussion in a moment, so please don't go away. Once again, let's take a look at Africa's popular cartoonist and satirist. Godfrey Mwampembwa in Tanzania, also known as Gedo, is the most syndicated political cartoonist in East and Central Africa. His cartoons on terrorism, deforestation, AIDS and corruption have consistently stirred debate. He won Kenya's National Human Rights Commission Award in Journalism in 2005 and 2007. Z, the Tunisian-born political cartoonist, conceals his identity from all but a few friends. He's a cyber activist who rose to fame through his blog DebatTunisie.com. Having criticized the regime of former President Zin El Abidin Ben Ali, he now questions the revolution, which he feels has been hijacked by conservatism and bigotry. The Zimbabwean-born artist Kudzanai Chiure stirred up controversy during the built-up to Zimbabwe's violent and disputed 2008 elections with a series of controversial depictions of President Robert Mugabe. His posters, which showed Mugabe in flames with horns on his head, raised the fury of Zimbabwe's ruling elite and got him threatened with arrest. He has been living in a self-imposed exile ever since. We are able to touch on things that are important to people on an everyday basis. We hope that our viewers are getting inspired when they watch our show. They're getting a view of the world from a different perspective, things that perhaps are not in their immediate vicinity. Today, I could put in on the show something that is a little different, a little unique, and this gives me that uh, you know, inspiration to come to work. If you like today's show, please write and tell us what you think or give us some suggestions. Be sure to tell us what station you're tuned into. Our address, Straight Talk Africa, Voice of America, 330 Independence Avenue Southwest, Washington, D.C., 20237 USA. Or send us an email at africatv at voanews.com. Log on to our website at voaafrica.com or post your comments on Facebook. Keywords, Straight Talk Africa. Kumiwati, my name, my name is Teacher Mpamire. Teacher Mpamiwati, my name is Teacher Mpamire from Uganda. From where? From Uganda. How are you, Kenya? How are you, Kewati? How are you, Kewati? I bring you greetings from His Excellency President Museveni. Musewati. <laughs> Museveni is the only president in East Africa with 114 presidential advisors, some of whom have never met him. <laughs> and even when they meet him, it is him who advises them. <laughs> to be here and I thank God that we are still alive. Arawati? We are still Arawati? We are still alive and we thank God because life is very important. Impawati? Life is very important that without it you would be dead. You would be what? Ask your neighbor, are you dead or alive? Are you dead or Arawati? Not just life is important but 
this world is more important. Important what? Important what? You know we are living in a wonderful world, but this world is also confusing. Confu what? This world is so confusing that we do not know who is the confuser and the confusee. Confu what? Ask your neighbor, are you the confuser or confusee? Once again, that's our studio guest, comedian Herbert Seguja Mendo, performing mm. his comedy act, mm. Teacher Pamire, mm. in a comedy club in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. Mm. Welcome mm. back. And of course, uh, this is Straight Talk Africa coming to you live from Washington. I have to say, frankly, that uh, that skit, <laughs> incredible. You just fit like a shoe. <laughs> you must yeah. be a teacher by profession. Yes, uh, I'm a teacher by profession. <laughs> I teach at uh, Standard High School. Uh, in the suburbs of Kampala. I've taught since 2006, and many, I've inspired a number of youth uh, 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 through comedy, you know, in class. I'm eager to make them learn mm -hmm. outside class. I'm eager to make them laugh. <laughs> so I combined the two, and I came up with a teacher and Pamire. Incredible. Uh, yes. There is a skit that um, I had the opportunity to watch, mm. and uh, you were performing at the Kampala Serena Hotel. Mm. And uh, you, at the end of uh, the skit, uh, you went into the public. I saw you uh, shaking the hand of uh, yes. the governor of the central bank, uh, Emmanuel yeah. Tumusimi yeah. Mutebi, a kid yes. from Kavare. <laughs> and I also... Ndugu. Yes. And I, I saw you mm. not only shaking the hand of his deputy mm. governor, mm. Mr. Kasekende. Yes. But in fact, you chose him as your successor. Mm. Now, given that uh, you know the Ugandan president very well, mm. Um, and he's the man, of course, uh, there are a lot of people who have been saying that maybe it is time for him really to retire and go back to Rwachitura and mm. uh, take care of his cows. Mm. Uh, were you saying something serious here? Well, uh, uh, my message... My mes Kaseke yes. is your successor. <laughs> well, uh, my message was uh, uh, I want to show people that... Uh, 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 seriously, uh, there must be a successor. And you know, by the time when people ask you for a successor, it doesn't mean that you have, uh, you have, uh, you have done something bad or mm. it, has become to, uh, it has become so worse that uh, now they need a replacement. But it shows people that uh, actually, uh, as, leadership, as she said, that uh, leadership comes from God, mm. but uh, everyone is, uh, can be a leader. So by giving people a chance, to, uh, to, to appoint a successor in front of them, it mm. shows some bit of democracy from, uh, from the president. If he has given them a chance, mm -hmm. that's why I came up with uh, that idea and said, by the way, I, I don't need to go to the state house. I, need, I can even select my successor from you people so that you feel like, oh, the president can choose me to be his successor. And I told him that my only challenge and my only advice is that once I give you this once you become my successor don't overstay in power now when you did that did you mm. get any reaction from state house in tebe or nakasem well i didn't get any reaction actually if it's a form of reaction it must be positive reaction mm -hmm. because uh it's it's humor it's mm. humor it's uh it's just entertainment and the president of course has said for the record that uh, he mm. would have liked to go yesterday except mm. that uh, he succumbs Mm. to the pressure of the people. I sometimes wonder which people yeah. might those be. Yes, he says power belongs to people. <laughs> and if people say that, ah, we still need you. So for him, he says, he can say, ah, let me come back if you still need me. Otherwise, uh, unfortunately, time <laughs> yeah. happens not mm. to be our best ally. Mm. Let's go to the lifeline of the show, which are the telephone callers. Mm. Good evening, Patrick from Nigeria. You're most welcome Straight Talk Africa. Good evening, Mr. Shaka. Good evening, Mr. Hubbard. I'm yes. hugely terrific. What is your question? You have one minute, Patrick. Uh, no problem. In Africa today, Mr. Shaka, we, religion plays an important role in politics, both voting pattern and campaign pattern. And my question to Mr. Hubbard as a comedian, mm. why do Africans celebrate corruption in the household of God? And all the gotten words we see that comes out from Africa, they are being stuck in Europe and Asia. Why is this so, Mr. Hubbard? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And in addition to that, there's another question from Twitter. Uh, it says, uh, uh, it is asking you, uh, was you, were you afraid 
to mimic President Yoweri Museveni when you first did it? Well, um, uh, let me start with this one. Mm. Um, uh, um, the, maybe the first time I was afraid, and uh, actually I was nervous. Why would you be afraid? Uh, he says that uh, he brought uh, you, you know, democracy. <laughs> he's a militant. <laughs> he's a militant. Mm. So, uh, it, because it was my first time to perform before him, I, had, mm. I was feeling so nervous that uh, I almost cancelled my performance. Mm. But uh, I had built a firm foundation before his people. So by the time, when, uh, by the time I went on stage, mm. uh, uh, I, I was already receiving an applause from the audience. Yes. And I gained that confidence. Otherwise, um, any general, any, any general, can make you nervous, you know. You can feel his, his presence. What about reports that uh, he likes you so much that, in fact, he may have sponsored you to come to America? Uh, well, um, <clears throat> he sponsored me for uh, comedy training mm -hmm. at American Comedy Institute, and uh, I went there personally. I asked him uh, to assist me so that I advance my career in comedy at the same time trying to uplift the standard of comedy in Uganda. Mm -hmm. So... He was fine with it, and, uh, allow, uh, and uh, uh, I thank him for that because that shows that uh, he appreciates arts in Uganda. And uh, uh, he might be the first president in Africa to sponsor a comedian because they don't take us serious. Interesting. What about the other question uh, from just Patrick? Just remind me about that question. About, about corruption? Mm. Yeah. What did he say? Uh, I think he was talking about uh, how a lot of uh, African... Uh, leaders and stuff like that, they are corrupt and stuff like that. Uh, perhaps what kind of comedian like you do? Uh, well, um, corruption, <laughs> corruption must be, uh, uh, it might be one of the, in Uganda we have a, what you call si uh, six killer diseases. We used to have malaria, typhoid, heart, chorella, but uh, corruption came on board and uh, it is something that, uh, that is even sensitive uh, uh, to me. As a comedian, but some people are concerned mm, about uh, mm. the president. Frankly, seems to be championing uh, the, the, the habit of, of the fight, what they call uh, the, the, the fight against brown envelopes. Yes, and wherever he goes, there are sacks of money following him. Now, uh, brown, uh, I'm one of the victims of the brown envelopes, by the way. I see. But to me, as an artist, uh, every time I receive those envelopes, uh, he doesn't call me at home. They don't call me that. Come to the state house and pick this brown envelope. I normally receive these brown envelopes after my performance, meaning that it's a token of appreciation. So uh, 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 I've looked at a number of envelopes he has given out, but these envelopes normally go to people who have, uh, who have been entertaining the audience every time he goes to a certain function. So for the issues of sex, maybe it's part of... And that, is, and that is people's money anyway, so maybe it is a form of redistributing... You never know. It might be people's money. It might resources. Be from his own well, pocket. Unfortunately, time mm. happens, frankly, not mm. to be our best ally. And on that mm. note, mm. thanks to our distinguished guests, mm. Ugandan comedian artist, mm. Albert Seguja, Adiora Fawemu, uh, host of Sahara TV is keeping it real with Adiora. Who joined us from VOA's New York studios. And last but not least, Khalid Arubai, a Sudanese political cartoonist, illustrator, designer, and writer who also joined us from New York. Thanks to our affiliate stations, along with our viewers and listeners, we thank you for tuning in. For many of our Voice of America radio affiliates, learning English is coming up next. And tomorrow morning, Today Break Africa with James Bate. On behalf of the Voice of America, thanks for tuning in to Straight Talk Africa. In the meantime, get better, not better Africa. And please remember to keep the African hope alive.